Hopefully you have watched the first two videos and have followed the discussion fairly well. And now we're going to do an example. Let's say we're attempting to answer this question. What percent of all U.S. adults are vegetarians? Well, to answer this question, I would go out and collect a sample at random, make sure it's not only a random sample, but it's also a simple random sample. And I would find out what percent of my sample are vegetarians. And if I have a real good sample, then I'd be able to take that number and extrapolate it out and create a statement that would look something like this. We are some percent confident that between some percent and another percent of the U.S. population are indeed vegetarians. Okay, this is always the kind of statement we want. But please, let's be clear on what we're trying to accomplish here. All I want to know is, and all what we've talked about in the previous two videos, is how big does my sample have to be in the first place for us to be able to make a statement like this with a given confidence level and a given margin of error that I'd like to end up with. So let's just, just pick something here. Let's say I would like a confidence level of uh, let's just say 98%, okay? We, we just have to decide what confidence level we, we want to deal with. I'd like to be 98% confident. In other words, if I go out and, and did this and collected 100 different samples, then 98 of them would, if I do the math on each one of them, would give me a confidence interval that really does contain the actual percent of all the U.S. population that are vegetarians. Okay, so we've got a confidence level, I just picked 98%. My margin of error, well, what margin of error would we like? Um, should be something kind of small. I mean, a margin of error of 50% is kind of silly. Uh, how, about, how about 3%? We're going to pick a margin of error plus or minus 3%. So the question is, how big must our sample be? to end up with a margin of error that is no more than 3%. Now, in the worst case, we may end up interviewing too many people and cause my margin of error to be actually less than 3%, but that's okay. I'll still claim it that it's 3%. All right. We've picked a confidence interval of 98%, margin of error 3%. All we have to do is take this formula that tells me the minimum sample size can be found by multiplying 0.5 times my critical value z sub alpha over 2 divided by e and then squaring all that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fill in these these two variables with the numbers that we've picked and then I'll use my calculator to actually calculate it. So here we go. n equals 0.5 times 98 percent. The critical value for 98 percent is 2.33 we picked a margin of error of 3%. 3% as a decimal is 0 0.03. And don't forget, when we're all done, we want to take this number and square it. So, grabbing my calculator. Got a different calculator here today. It's all right. We're going to take, I don't know if you can read this or not. Probably can't read it on this one any better than any of the others. 0.5 times 2.33 divided by 0 0.03. Let's just find what that number is. There it is. I get, I don't know if you can read that, but it says about 38.833333 repeating. And don't forget, I need to square this. So squaring this, I just hit the squared key, and that gives me 1,508.02 blah, blah, blah. Let me write that down. So this is equal to 1,000. 508.0277. I think the 7 just repeats on and on and on. This did not turn out to be a whole number because of this trailing decimal. We always round it up to the next higher number, so this would be 1,509. In my sample, I have to, I would have to ask at least one, at least 1,509 people in a simple random sample if they are vegetarians. Then I would be able to answer this question and have a margin of error that is no more than 3%.
They might be less than that. I mean, if I decide to just go out and interview instead of this many, why don't I decide to go out and interview 2,000 as a nice round number? Okay, I would calculate it, and I bet my margin of error would turn out to be maybe closer to 2.5%. Don't know. But in any case, there's my minimum sample size right there. And this concludes our discussion of how do we calculate the sample size if we want to create a confidence interval for a population proportion. You'll find that uh, in a later video, we'll do the same thing for a population mean, and there's a slightly different formula. But we'll talk about that later.